is part 37 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss generating a radio button list in MVC using HTML helpers. Please watch part 36 before proceeding. Now, for each department within this table TBL department, we want to generate a radio button. If I don't select any of the radio buttons, and then once I click on the submit button, we want to display a message stating you didn't select any department. On the other hand, if I have a department selected, and then once I click on the submit button, we want to display a message, you select a department with ID is equal to whatever is the ID of the selected department. Let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. The first step is to add a model class. So let's right click on the models folder, add a class file, and let's name it company.cs. And this class is going to contain department's property, which is going to return list of department objects. Now, notice within the get accessor, we are creating an instance of instance of sample DB context class. And if you remember, this class is coming from the sample data model, which is nothing but the ADO.NET entity data model that we have built in the previous sessions of this video series. And this class has got this department's property, which is going to return the list of departments in TBL department table. And this company class is going to contain another property of type string. And the name of the property is going to be selected department. And this is going to be an auto implemented property. Now, we're going to make use of this property to receive the selected department ID. So notice that a user can select a department and then once he submits the form to the server, we are going to make use of this property you know, to receive that selected department ID value. Now the next step is to implement the index action within home controller. Now we're going to make use of this company class within our home controller. And notice that this class is present in this namespace MVC demo.models. So we need to include this namespace within our home controller. So, within the index action method, I'm going to create an instance of a company class. And let's pass the instance to the view. Now let's generate index view. So right click on the action method, select add view from the context menu. Name of the view is going to be index, raise a view engine, and we are going to create a strongly typed view against company model class. So this should add index view. Now, when I click on this button, we want to post the form to the server. So we need a form tag. And to generate form tag, I'm going to make use of this begin form HTML helper. And notice that the call to this function is wrapped inside a using block. So this will ensure that a closing form tag is automatically generated. Right, now we need to loop through each department and then generate a radio button. So to loop through each department, I'm going to make use of for each loop. So the model for this view is the company object. And if you remember, this company object has got department's property. So we are going to loop through each department. And for each department, we want to generate a radio button. So we're going to make use of radio button for HTML helper. And then the first parameter for this function is going to be a link expression. So m such that m dot selected department. Whatever property we specify here is going to be treated as the ID and name for the radio button. And then notice that for each radio button, we want you know the radio button value and also you know the name of the radio button to be displayed next to it okay so to retrieve the id of the department i'm going to make use of the id property of the department object notice that we are looping through each department we are using the department object and retrieving the id so the value of the radio button is going to be the id of the department 
and then we want to display department name text next to each radio button and then once all the radio buttons are printed then we want to you know have some breaks and then a submit button so input type equal to submit and the value is also going to be submit okay so with all these changes let's go ahead and run this and as you might expect when the form renders we should have something like this so notice that we have all the departments now let me select a department and click submit basically nothing happens this reloads that's because we haven't implemented you know a post action so this method we want this to be responding to HTTP get action and we want another index action method responding to the post operation so within the post method this action method is going to receive a company object and then look at what should happen when we click on that submit button if I don't have a department selected we want to you know return this message if I have a department selected then we want to display the ID of the selected department and to do that and by the way look at this form when I right click on that and view page source and let me zoom this and notice that notice the name of each radio button you know it's nothing but selected department the name and ID of each radio button alright now to retrieve the um, selected department ID value we're going to make use of that selected department property so this company object has got selected department property so we are going to make use of that we're going to check if that property is null or empty then we know for sure the end user hasn't selected any department so if string dot is null or empty and we're going to check this company object selected department property if it is null or empty then we simply return so we just want to return a string back so we are going to return here else we know that the user has selected department in which case we want to return a string saying you selected department with ID is equal to whatever is the ID of the selected department and how do we get that company dot selected department property will give that so with these changes let's go ahead and run this so this method is going to respond to the post operation so I, I, I don't have any department selected there look at that you didn't select any department on the other hand if I select a department you select a department with ID is equal to 2 if I select payroll the ID of the payroll department is 3 alright now notice that these departments are in horizontal um, you know order if you want them in vertical order then all you need to do is include an HTML break inside your view so when you're looping through just include an HTML break here so now if we run this so we get them in vertical orientation but the behavior will be the same now look at this within this um, table we have e selected property as well now e selected is one for HR meaning when the form is loaded by default let's say we want HR department to be selected 
that radio button to be selected. How do we achieve that? Again, it's pretty simple. So if you notice this radio button for HTML, there is another overloaded version where we can pass HTML attributes. Okay, and if you remember this department, every department object has got you know three properties. What are they? ID, name, and e selected. So if e selected property has got a value, and if that is true, then we want to set you know checked attribute to checked for this radio button. So radio button has got several attributes: ID, name, checked. So this checked attribute is what determines whether if that radio button is selected or not. So we need to set that to checked. And when am I going to set that attribute to checked? So I'm going to check. So we have this department object. So if department dot is selected, if that property has a value, and if that value is true. So if these two conditions are true, then we know that is selected attribute, I mean is selected property is set to one, is selected column within that table is set to one, in which case we want to pass, so if that condition is true, then we want to include the HTML attribute checked. And this checked is a reserved keyword in C sharp. If it is reserved, we have to prefix with uh, an at symbol. So we want to set that to checked. On the other hand, if any of these conditions, if this condition is false, in that case we don't want to include any attributes. So in which case we'll simply pass now. Okay, so with these change, let's go ahead and run this and see if the HR department is selected on the form load. Notice that it works as expected. And if you look at the HTML, so for that HR department, notice that this is the HR department value is equal to 2, and then it has got this checked attribute set, which is set to checked. And that's why you know we have this radio button option selected. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.